Hi friends. Today I'm going to read some poems. These poems were written by Shel Silverstein. He's one of my very favorite poets. And in this book there are a lot of poems and I'm going to read some of them. The book is called Where the Sidewalk Ends. Uh, and Shel Silverstein writes, writes poems, he wrote poems for kids. Some of them are a little bit silly. Some of them are very, very silly. And some of them even are good for teaching us things about, about life. So we'll notice that as we read. You'll also notice that as I'm reading, I don't really look at the words because I've heard these poems so many times that I've memorized them, which means I don't need to read them. I just have them in my head. You might listen to them so many times that you have them memorized too, which is pretty exciting. The, many of the poems have pictures and that can help us imagine what's going on. And there's a lot of rhymes in these poems too. So you might say some of the rhyming words with me or you might say all of the words with me if you can. This first one is called Homemade Boat. This boat that we just built is just fine and don't try to tell us it's not. The sides and the back are divine. It's the bottom, I guess we forgot. What happens if you forget to put the bottom on a boat? Oh no. This is a favorite of many kids that I've taught. It's called Captain Hook. Now Captain Hook, instead of a hand, he has a hook on one of his arms. So it makes some things pretty difficult. Captain Hook must remember not to scratch his toes. Captain Hook must watch out and never pick his nose. Oh. Captain Hook must be gentle when he shakes your hand. And Captain Hook must be careful opening sardine cans and playing tag and pouring tea and turning pages of his book. Lots of folks I'm glad I ain't, but mostly Captain Hook. And then on this page, hug of war. I will not play a tug of war. I'd rather play a hug of war, where everyone hugs instead of tugs, where everyone giggles and rolls on the rug, where everyone kisses and everyone grins and everyone cuddles and everyone wins. Jimmy Jet and his TV set. Now this one's pretty silly, but there's some things to learn from it too. I'll tell you the story of Jimmy Jet, and you know what I tell you is true. He loved to watch his TV set almost as much as you. He watched all day and he watched all night till he grew pale and lean from the early show to the late, late show and all the shows between. He watched till his eyes were frozen wide and his bottom grew into his chair and his chin turned into a tuning dial. An antenna grew out of his hair, and his brains turned into TV tubes and his face to a TV screen. And two knobs saying vert and horiz grew where his ears had been. And he grew a plug that looked like a tail. So we plugged in little Jim. And now, instead of him watching TV, we all sit around and watch him. I wonder if that could really happen. Maybe. Early bird. If you're a bird, be an early bird and catch the worm for your breakfast plate. If you're a bird, be an early, early bird. But if you're a worm, sleep late. That was a pretty short one. Here's another really short one. It's called Ridiculous Rose and there aren't any pictures. So you're just gonna have to imagine it in your mind. Her mama said, don't eat with your fingers. Okay, said Ridiculous Rose. So she ate with her toes. Oh, Ridiculous Rose. Ridiculous means very, very silly. The crocodile's toothache. The crocodile went to the dentist and he sat down in the chair 
And the dentist said, now tell me, sir, why does it hurt and where? And the crocodile said, I'll tell you the truth. I have a terrible, terrible ache in my tooth. And he opened his jaws so wide, so wide, that the dentist, he climbed right inside. And the dentist laughed, oh, isn't this fun, as he pulled the teeth out one by one. And the crocodile cried, oh, you're hurting me so. Please put down your pliers and let me go. But the dentist just laughed with a ho, 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 and said, I still have 12 to go. Oops, that's the wrong one, I confess. But What's one crocodile tooth more or less? And then suddenly the jaws went snap and the dentist was gone right off the map. And where he went, no one could guess. To north, to south, to east or west, he left no forwarding address. But what's one dentist more or less? Do you understand what happened to the dentist? He was inside the crocodile's mouth and pulling out way too many of the crocodile's teeth. Ooh. That wasn't such a good idea. Lazy Jane. Lazy, 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 lazy Jane. She wants a drink of water. So she waits and waits and waits and waits and waits for it to rain. I suppose that's one way of getting a drink of water. The next poem is about an ice cream cone. An ice cream cone stacked high with lots and lots of different flavors. It's called 18 Flavors. Actually, there's no picture, so I'll just hold it down here. So you can, you have to imagine it in your mind. 18 luscious, scrumptious flavors. Chocolate, lime, and cherry. Coffee, pumpkin, fudge, banana, caramel, cream, and boysenberry. Rocky Road, toasted almond, butterscotch, vanilla dip, butter, brickle, apple, ripple, coconut, and mocha chip. Brandy, peach, and lemon custard. Each scoop lovely smooth and round, tallest ice cream cone in town, lying there on the ground. Did you understand? The ice cream cone had 18 scoops, 18 flavors, but it fell on the ground. I suppose that happens when you have too tall of an ice cream cone. This next one is called Dancing Pants. It's a new one. I don't really know this one. I haven't really heard it before, but I was reading and I thought it looked funny. So look, it's about some pants that are doing their own dancing. And now for the dancing pants, doing their fabulous dance. From the seat to the pleat, they will bounce to the beat with no legs inside them and no feet beneath. They'll whirl and they'll twirl and jiggle and prance, so start the music and give them a chance. Let's have a big hand for the wonderful, marvelous, super sensational, utterly fabulous, talented dancing pants. That one's, I think, in the very, very silly category. And this last poem that I am going to read, it, I also don't read this one very much, but it really reminded me of my TK students. Because it's called Band-Aids. They like to put on band-aids. I think you do, friends. You like to put on band-aids. I have a band-aid on my finger, one on my knee and one on my nose, one on my heel and two on my shoulder, three on my elbow and nine on my toes, two on my wrist and one on my ankle, one on my chin and one on my thigh, four on my belly and five on my bottom, one on my forehead and one on my eye, one on my neck and in case I might need them, I have a full box of 35, of 35 more, but oh, I do think it's sort of a pity. I don't have a cut or a sore. Do you understand? He has all these band-aids on, but no owies. I understand band-aids are kind of fun. So that was the book where the sidewalk ends. And you might like to listen to this many times so that you can learn a few of these poems and then you can recite them to your family or friends. You can say, hey, I know a poem, and you just tell it to them. All right, thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed them.